Hello everybody, this is Zigzag Zog coming to you from somewhere in this world and we're back to continue our playthrough of Empire Total War featuring Darth Mod and the 40 unit save version. And we pretty much did everything we needed to at the end of the last episode regarding this turn other than the fun part and that is spending <laughs> our treasury. And so we have uh, a decent amount of available funds and we're going to upgrade pretty much, I think this may reach and get us fairly upgraded for the rest of um, the continent and then we can move on upgrading elsewhere unless we have some new technology <laughs> that develops and then we have a, a new focus for our treasury uh, we'll go ahead and start upgrading here with the state house in Strasbourg now that we have it back and then we're gonna head down to some ports and start upgrading or hopefully finishing upgrading the majority of the ports here uh, so we got Savoy upgraded. Uh, let's head down to Spain. I know we got one more port down here. There we go. And we'll get that upgraded. Um, we have a little farm off in the distance here that we had missed earlier. And uh, I think over in Portugal we have some opportunities. And pretty much I've avoided all the schools. That's not my priority right now. It's, it's getting income back with these upgrades not that our income's bad but as we uh need to expand our army for the continent of in or for the con for india we need to um improve our income also because we're going to need armies to take on the Mughals more than what we have over there conducting raids all right so that should be it so uh Let's hit the next turn button. We'll see you on the other side unless something vastly interesting pops up. All right, Spain has asked. <laughs> Spain likes getting technology from us. So let's see if they have anything to trade differently than basically just handing them technology. And guess what? They demand technology and they have nothing in return. I do not, I absolutely do not need ab military access. So uh, we'll just cancel and uh, say no, not this time. All right, so we have a force somehow. Okay, it's just the garrison that we have left here. Uh, so already they're attacking, they combine their armies and there's no way we're gonna be able to hold on to this, but we have our strike force over here maybe we can strike on right back to take it back and uh, make life difficult for the Mughals but for now we're just gonna auto resolve let them take it back and then see if we can't return the favor and we didn't hurt them tremendously on that auto resolve uh, but what do you expect with a garrison force all right our garrison force has been destroyed as we knew uh, an enemy fleet has undertaken a raid on a trade route, and I think, yes, the Swedes moved over to this trade route here to cause some issues for us. Uh, this fleet of theirs does not include, it's just a galley, a brig, and a sloop, so it does not include any uh, of their new fourth rates, and uh, they, they've lost that ability to build any more now that we've taken over the port in uh, Tunisia. And we lost control of the region in India. We knew that. We have a successful mission again by our rake who's just planted in here with their army. Uh, so far, they're just staying still, staying stationary. Uh, we have a flute in the Indian Ocean that we want to get progressed over towards the Straits of Madagascar. And we'll probably want to build another one. So let's just go straight there and uh, make that happen. We have two fifth rates headed over to the Straits of Madagascar. We did not have their Swedish fourth rate that was over there take any action against us yet. Uh, so I guess combining those two fleets of ours together uh, paid off. So let's send the flute over. And let's build another one because we're gonna need uh, some naval vessels to recapture there's the flute to recapture those trade nudes trade nodes uh, hopefully once <laughs> we get it back uh, i didn't know the trade nodes were nudes but uh so much for my ability to speak properly at times 
Uh, we got a whole bunch of upgrades. Uh, slowly, 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 our income is going to start improving with some of these. Not all of them, but some of these. We got a lot of fleets on the move, and we have some new ports appearing. Let's take a peek at where those might be. Uh, down here in Panama, we have a new port. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and spend money to make that into a trade port right now. And we have another new trade port. Let's find out where this one is. Over here. Ah, Venezuela, Caracas. New Andalusia. Another trading port to help our income there. Uh, why don't we get moving since we're right here with our Navy that has, I hope, <laughs> a guy in there. And hopefully when we move it over here, my, my rake will not disembark as I go to pick up uh, this force down here either. We're going to find out because we're going to move our army that has been replenished to get them back on to the fleet. And hopefully that agent is still there. I don't know. What we're going to do just to make sure, <laughs> since this game is funky with agents, uh, we're going to take the fleet just a tiny bit out of port, make sure the agent is with us this time. And he is not. So let's go pick up the agent. And he should be with us now. And yes, he is on the fleet. So we're learning the little trick with agents now. <laughs> and let's get over as we wanted to, to the port on Cuba. And the next leg will help us get over with the rake, not necessarily the army, uh, to the port in Louisiana. And let's hopefully next time we won't forget to uh, do the little trick to keep the agent with us. Send the orders, Captain. Well, let's take a peek over in India. We had that little battle where we lost a force. I'm thinking, uh, I'm feeling like uh, heading on back down and doing a little battle back here to take the city back. We're kind of, kind of ping pong back and forth. I think that will be what we do. So let's take our full army. Demand surrender, which should not happen this time. No, this time we will get down in there and do a battle. Nothing uh, super large. I thought they had two artillery guns, but maybe the few units that we damaged when they attacked, one of them must have been artillery because this one only has eight men attached to it. So thank goodness that, that just helped us out because we only have that one artillery piece of our own. So good job. We will see you on the battlefield. All right, looks like we have some hills and whatnot to contend with. I think I will, however, from this point. Yeah, we're on a little bit of a crest that gives a pretty decent view. So I think this is the home for our artillery. I will go set up our army the way I want and uh, we'll come right back and we'll show you how we're gonna start this battle. Okay, we do outnumber them and we should be able to take care of them. We have the artillery centered right here on the rise here that gives us a decent view of their deployment zone. Um, we have a couple of some walls over here, although this uh, particular regiment is bent. And it couldn't fill, the wall wasn't quite long enough to fill it all front facing. Uh, but we have this as our line on this side. And then once again, we have another wall on this side for a couple of our regiments. And then we have plenty of reserves in case uh, some melee combat ensues. Generals in the back. And once again, we have our cavalry to do our bidding against artillery should they leave it exposed. Uh, so let's go find out how they set up. We'll let the cannon fire away at will. Usually they'll target the other enemies automatically uh, artillery pieces and I'm fine with that we will get our cavalry ready to charge in should we have an opportunity when they're pretty far back pretty pretty far back do we see artillery 
Oh, there's their lone artillery piece. So actually, I don't know that we need to necessarily charge our cavalry <laughs> for just one gun. I think we have enough artillery advantage that we can handle that. A lot of their units are melee units that are going to be advancing. And we have axes that they'll be bringing against us, uh, the dervishes. Yeah, so it looks like we're mostly up against melee units uh, in general. I'm not seeing a lot of small arms. More dervishes. There, we got musket men uh, back in the distance, but the arms, the forces, they're moving towards us, and we got some camel nomads in the back. But mostly, we're dealing with, mostly we're dealing with uh, melee infantry here. So for the moment, we'll recall the cavalry, keep them off to the side. Uh, actually, we'll keep them off to the side this way to be able to charge in and help if they uh, close in on our line. We'll keep the artillery, as far as I'm concerned, at the moment. And it looks like we must, oh no, we haven't quite knocked out their artillery. So let's just uh, see if we can finish the job here. Well, I'll tell you what, they seem to be positioned in just such a way that our cannon fire is bouncing uh, short off the hill or flying over them. So we may not have a clear line of sight or else we just took some bad shots. So let's reorient our artillery on our infantry here that's closest, that could be charging us. And we'll see if we can run our cavalry. Yep, we should be able to work our cavalry in there, take out their artillery the old fashioned way with a cavalry charge. And then we can weaken them up hopefully. Yep, we're already started lowering their numbers. These infantry units of theirs look like they're going to be working on some kind of flanking move. So I think what we'll do is we'll keep one unit in reserve. We'll bring this one over here, whoops, in this direction. To kind of make a flanking move somewhat difficult. We'll allow them to fire at will. And we will bring this unit more towards the flank. Cavalry is positioned for a charge for once and all. Once and for all, take out their unprotected artillery. They do have musketmen, but they're at a distance, so I'm not worried about them. And that is one less artillery piece <laughs> for this battle. Not that they did major damage on us. It looks like uh, they focused on this unit. We only lost about 25 men. Uh, so not a big, big deal. And nobody's making a move towards us. Not even their infantry units. So we'll bring our cavalry back out this way uh, to help with their potential charge as they'll be coming in against our line. As a matter of fact... They've gone hidden. They have the ability to hide as they move through the brush. I think it's uh, uh, in our best interest to maybe advance a little bit. Go out from behind the wall. Bring up our reserves. We have cavalry to help out in the rear. Should there any be any difficulties with with their their attack and the melee that will ensue? We have some more melee units of theirs that are taking the long route towards our other flank, but they're quite distant yet, so we don't have to worry about them. In fact, no sight yet, so we'll move we'll move forward a little closer. Kind of to the crest of the hill here. And bring up our reserves. Pretty ready to halt if we gain sight. We know they're out there somewhere. We aren't doing tremendous. We are slowly weakening this unit down that's drawing our attention. 
Uh, so nothing yet. Let's uh, let's keep keep the advance going. In fact, we'll run this time. We'll bring the general down this way, just in case we need extra assistance on this advance. So far, nothing. I'm pretty surprised. They're hiding well. They have the ability to somehow sneak by even further. Let's bring our cavalry in to see if we can gain some sight. And there we go. We have some sight. We know they are out there. We knew it. We keep the cavalry nearby just to keep eyes on so we can fire at them. I don't. I think we'll be far enough back where we shouldn't take, hopefully, <laughs> friendly fire in order to keep eyes on them. There we go. We'll stay, we'll stay right there. And in the distance so far, they haven't closed in yet. Cavalry in the rear, so they're forced to move along our line and just take withering fire. We'll have the artillery focus right here. Catch up to this unit before it regathers. And regroups. We have their camel nomads out there. Looks like they might be ready to regroup soon. The cavalry is taking the long way around, pathing wise. This hillside must be impassable to my cavalry. Hopefully they turn and don't get too close to the musket men. We have a small group of camel nomads to keep an eye on. And since they're trying to come up flankwise, we will get this unit out there ready to fire at will. And once again, we will shift over our reserves. They've moved out of range, so we will advance some more. In fact, where's our cannon so we don't get in their line of fire? And our reserves will come up. Finally, we got around. And it looks like we gained, we had some, some smoke residue over here, so that we, they, we did get close enough to their musketmen to take fire. And we're down about 17 soldiers in the cavalry regiment. But they are now shattered. Get our infantry up close again. Our artillery. Moving out of range once more. We're gonna hard press. We're gonna keep pressing. We're gonna keep pressing. We're gonna keep pressing. In fact, we're gonna make a charge. Although it's close range, so hopefully they will get up to speed. We're gonna make a charge right into these guys and see how our cavalry holds up to their melee units. Ooh, silence the artillery or redirect the artillery. And they do not held, hold up well to the cavalry charge. Yeah, 
think we need to withdraw before our own friendly fire t starts taking place. The musket men closed in and we repulsed them. We missed that part of the battle. And here they finally charge in. Something they should have done a long time ago to challenge us. And they are broken. have their camel nomads working towards us, so we're going to bring our cavalry back at this point. Reserves over here, bring the rest of our line forward since this seems to be the direction. They aren't, they aren't exactly sure which part of our line they need to go at. They, they have been a little non-committal, which has killed their attack. In fact, this line should be able to hold against them. I think it's time we start moving out in this direction towards this retreating dervishes and towards their garrison musketmen in the rear. And this terrain is a little difficult for forming lines. But we'll do our, be our best to advance in that direction now. They didn't close and get in close to us for melee, but fortunately not where our artillery was. And now I think it's time to get aggressive on this side also, moving out. Protected units back here. I, let's just make sure they're within range. Yeah, I don't see any cutoff for the artillery's or boundaries. Yeah, it's back here is where it is. So we are in within range to start bombarding those guys hiding behind the wall. And we've enclosed over here with a little bit of a battle with our soldiers afoot. So let's get them in the melee stance. And they're against it. We, they're going to need some support. In fact, who better to support than cavalry? In fact, they're starting to break already. And our advance here popped up a unit and I did not react quick enough. Let's just get in here and charge. This is their musket men, so they aren't necessarily their strength for melee. Let's just overwhelm them. Looks like we had a bloody battle over here that cost us soldiers. We're going to have to be careful with our raid tactics if we wear down too fast like this. And we are starting to break their musket men over here. Ooh, large unit, 500 men. No wonder they wear us down so much. Their regiments and units are quite massive. them back on fire at will. Uh, we'll get everybody moving forward yet again for the big advance. And we are getting a little too close with the cavalry to taking fire. So we'll back them off. These guys are shattered. We will not see them again. And their units are coming out of the wall. We're going to silence our artillery now because this is becoming uh, pretty much it's going to be the final battle here. everybody's off melee and are ready to uh, start firing
We are active, we are not tired, so we're gonna run to our new positions. Ooh, they got close enough to our cavalry as I was repositioning everybody else. these three moving up this way. We need these guys to run. And we need these guys to square it up for the camels that are a charging. straight line attack here it looks like that is the rest or the final amount of units we need to contend with time to run these guys down this square doesn't seem to oh there now they got the firing going that'll shake them up <laughs> oh close range fire like that and they're we're gonna charge right into their backs so camels do not like square formation either we may have just wrapped up their army. Oh no, the camels have reformed. Didn't learn their lesson once. They're going to face the square formations one more time. This time, though, we're going to have our commander ready to chase them down next time they break. There they go. Whoops. Not that. Cavalry, keep up where you are. General, chase them down. We'll cease fire and the battle is ending we're just actually we'll just end it right now because this is a city battle so we will be victorious they don't retreat out of city battles all right we have the city back yet again um, we're gonna continue the destruction that we started And uh, really, we can't get anywhere else um, at the moment. I, I, originally, before they retook that city, I was thinking about heading up this way. But I think we'll stay more towards the coast as we target our, uh, pick out our next target. We may move over here first before heading over there. That would be four territories potentially here uh, that we've really weakened uh, in our rating. That's a pretty successful in my mind. We gained a trait plus morale in battle for our general down here. Very good. In fact, let's take a look at our general and what he uh, appears to be. He's up to four stars now. Good job. Let's go take a look before I forget where these fleets have arrived and so what we need to do with them. Um, looks like the coast of Brazil. We can switch out as necessary. Let's bring it down this way. Yep, we need repairs on these flutes down here. Uh, so the flutes, both of them, will depart for repairs. And we'll take over this node. Is there any any others needing repair? I think we're good on these nodes. So we've got our final repairs going over here too. Yep, we're in good shape. Fleet has arrived here this time, straight to Madagascar, and this is the time we combine our fleets and we try to take it to that Swedish fourth rate that was last known parked here. There we go. Let's see if we can handle payback time. He's uh, well promoted and he's well gunned. But overall, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can hold up to him. So we'll see you on the high seas. Okay, our flute is uh, the 
particularly weakened one, so we'll bring him to the back of the line. In fact, I think we're going to have two separate lines here. And with the wind going in that direction, we're going to set up two separate lines down here to take advantage of the wind. So we're going to have two separate groupings is the way I've decided to approach this one. My um, general... And we're actually putting the general uh, in the rear. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is promote a new general and have his ship targeted because we know the fourth raid outclasses us in general. So um, we're going to lead off with the weaker ships, see if we can't weaken him down. If we take losses, oh well. And uh, hopefully they'll weaken him down for the fifth rates then to start pounding. And once we close in, let's go find out where he is. There he is. Once we get closed in, we will come back and resume. Okay, we're starting to get a lot closer. Uh, this grouping of two ships is much slower, unfortunately, with the flute leaving or leading the way. So, unfortunately, uh, we are split up. It'd be nicer to have timed it. And uh, he's turning to take early shots, unfortunately. We couldn't stay ahead of his bow and get in front of his bow before he gets off shots. But perhaps now is the time with him turning to face this part of the fleet. We turn in this way, maybe. Come at him from some different angles. If they can get there in time. This is our Admiral's flagship, so we're going to have to keep our eyes on it. We are already listed as losing or <laughs> losing slightly. I'm going to break these two apart. He's turning on our sixth rate, which cannot hold up to him. Let's see if we can drop back somehow. No, he, he's matching our pace. Uh, so we're in trouble here. Unless he can somehow keep, keep moving forward and allow us to get a better angle. And still not sink before that happens. He's got our bow in his sights. That's going to be a tremendous pounding if he gets off shots. Unfortunately, he takes those shots against our fifth rate. And we still got these distant fleet, the distant fleet down here that's got to get re aimed and get in this battle. Our chance to get some good bow and stern shots against him. We do see a fire. That's good. But it looks like it's got put out. We need support in a hurry. We're still outgunned. like it's saying he's back on fire. I don't see the fire. Start turning to keep pace and get our other fleet if it can get angled correctly. And pretty soon he's going to be able to outrun us.
We do have a hull side at least uh, that is weakened up on this side. The same side that our at least fifth rate. Uh, although we're concerned about hull damage also on this side. But if we stay at this angle, he will not be returning fire to threaten our hull. And we are getting out of range, so we're going to have to turn in to follow. Because he's isolating our sixth rate right now. Good job for him. Now, if our sixth rate can manage to get him to slow down so other vessels can catch up, that would be amazing. And he's doing just that as he turns into our other vessels. Uh, we're going to start breaking this one apart now, too, so we can get more control. Finally, we have more than one vessel to take fire upon him. In fact, we're going to take the sixth rate out of it at the moment. We're going to have our two fifth rates soon being able to take fire upon him, which hopefully will greatly aid our cause. Uh-oh. We got hull damage here. They're routing. Got his guns down below 40 for a change. Taking a hit to our weakened hull side over here on our flagship. Let's see if we can get our fleet turned. Oh, he's back into it. Turn that way quick enough. Can you turn this way quick enough? We like pounding from multi directions. That's what we like. And we finally are weakening the hull and getting him to become concerned. Keep him in line, keep him in line, keep him lined up. our flute go fast enough to cut them off? There's a question for you. I kind of doubt it.
flute will change the chain shot to hopefully get a lucky hit to slow him down. So we position our fifth rate to intercept. And he has surrendered. We cut off his retreat. <laughs> Close victory. We needed every bit of those vessels we had. <laughs> All right, we have the ability to capture another fourth rate, and that is something we will do. What we'll be able to do is then move that fourth rate into our Indian theater. Um, and that'll be a nice boost to that fleet over there. Trait gain plus morale in battles for our admiral. And another trait plus one to command when attacking at sea. So very good. This is uh, that one done. Uh, what we do before we leave this theater, or we're going to take up the trade nodes until we get some reinforcements next turn. In fact, we're going to keep our Admiral along with that heavily damaged 4th rate uh, on one of the nodes over here. And as soon as we get some relief, we will... Uh, we'll send them back for repairs and uh, take control once again of the blockading of the Mughal Empire. And we've grabbed our nodes back again. <laughs> there we go. Take that, Sweden. Uh, we got some repairs. I think our final repairs from the East Indies over here. We'll get them sent in for repairs. And the final fleet that we need to keep track of. And that is repairs going back to the Americas. It doesn't look like we have any others to send back that have been repaired. So we'll just send it over here. And there we go. Now we'll take a final look around to make sure there's no other units I need to move and uh, have some activity with. After that, then we will see what we want to spend our 16 grand on. It looks like we have a lot of opportunities to upgrade our economy in the Americas. Uh, but let me take a look around and I'll let you know what I find. And I'll tell you what I found is I found the Swedish uh, forces have sent a sent a infantry unit over here to kick us out of the port and therefore make us a vulnerable. Um, what we'll do is we will send a contingent. Let's just see what kind of unit it is. It's just simple militia. So if we send, do we have cavalry? If we send cavalry with a couple infantry units over here to take care of him. Oh, and, and, and we're also reinforcing, but I don't want to do that yet because I don't want to pull them away from taking the city once and for all that so they can't keep piecemealing units over. Uh, we'll just uh, auto-resolve this one. Ooh, and we lost a whopping 362 out of that battle. But we stopped him from kicking us out of the port. And we can continue to take over Algiers. So it wasn't Tunisia, excuse me. I think I referred to this as Tunisia earlier. It's actually Algiers. Uh, they should surrender for us. And we have ruined the ability of Sweden to make fourth rates once again. So we'll just have to keep our eyes and make sure we see no Swedish blue pop back in. It looks like they did retake uh, their homeland. It's blue again. 
but they have some tough battles going apparently with the Russians. Uh, we're going to tear down the shipyard. I want to trade it or change it into a trading port. In fact, is there really anything? Yeah, there's stuff here to 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 be able to trade with. So um, let's tear this down. Uh, we'll take in the port here. And uh, we will rebuild here also. In fact, we'll tear this down and build it with one of our own facilities. All right, something else we're doing. I'm going to see if I can get the ability to um, cross the lands of Hanover uh, to get over to Denmark. Let's just see if they're open to that kind of diplomacy. In fact, we don't need extensive access. Uh, let's go with uh, 10 turns for the moment. Eh, we'll just go. We'll do 20 just in case we have to sit over here a little while to get that city under um, control without, as far as public order is concerned, to give us a chance to get back to the mainland. Um, let's see what they are, what we might want to. Oh, we aren't going to offer access, excuse me. We're going to demand access, and we are going to see if we can't give them a little something to help out. Some measuring devices to upgrade their roads that we will be using. <laughs> and let's see if they're open to this trade. Whoops. We offer measuring tools. We demand military access, I thought. There we go. Let's see, they want a military alliance, military access indefinite, and they want some... Ooh, they want us to pay, too. Can we do this without a payment, I wonder? Nope, they want that payment. We can afford it, but we're going to do it just so we can uh, not upset anybody and get across. We're allied with them now, so hopefully that means we don't have to worry about being attacked by them. Um... And their enemies right now are the same as ours, Sweden. So uh, that does align, so we'll go ahead and do it. And now our forces can move to our ultimate target, Copenhagen. And we have navies over here. If something weird should happen and we need to get them returned quickly, uh, we'll still be able to do that. Let's take our navy here to uh, take it back to get repaired while we're here. We need some repairs on this one. I do it in greater amounts. I just uh, don't want to keep our blockading force uh, too weak that they can just break out. Okay, before I forget, coming back down here, let's get these... Not that there were any major losses, but let's get these armies down here replenished so they're working with them uh, at full strength. And then we'll be moving against Venice at last. Uh, I noticed Venice has some new territories. Uh, they are, they're down here at Tripoli. And that looks like a little fort battle, but they have a port down here, a trading port. But I wouldn't mind to start rolling up their territories. They also have, uh, no, not the tip of Italy, over uh, the tip of Greece. Uh, they have a territory down here, Patras, that we can maybe take on our way up to Venice proper. Uh, so far, they're pretty much holding steady. Um, they're not doing a lot of aggressive building, so I'm fine with just having our little force here trying to hold them in place. Not that they can't overwhelm us, but we'll take that chance. And now that we're here and thinking of repairing armies, I figured I'd better come back to India and, and get ourselves repaired here also. Especially while we have the funds. All right, I feel like uh, that's everything we need to do on this particular turn. We're gonna go ahead and spend our funds now. And uh, since we just took over Algiers, let's go ahead and upgrade right away. 
our new territory. And then we'll get on the move, uh, start taking it to Venice. Uh, they have their navy that moved over in this general direction. Yeah, apparently I've lost sight of their navy, but it is, they didn't go move over in this direction. It could be even be in this uh, unseen shadowy area. I don't know that they moved quite this far over. And as we can see last turn, this is something that did happen. Uh, the Ottoman Empire is getting broken up badly. Uh, Istanbul has been taken last turn by Austria. Uh, this is why we weren't getting any trade from the Ottoman Empire, because their main trade node or tra trade port here had been burned by the Austrians for quite a while. It's just now that they finally were able to uh, take over Istanbul. One difference is now with Istanbul out, we are getting a trickle of trade back from the Ottoman Empire, even though it is being raided. So there's something positive to take from it. Gets our income back over 20,000 by getting trade back with the Ottoman Empire. Oh, I remember where I saw the Venice Navy move. They moved down towards their port, whether they reached it or not, they were in moving in the direction of uh, their trading port down here in Tripoli. Now I had the ability to make a move against the Swedish Navy. Uh, the question is, if I take my Navy and after battle, will I have the range to uh, pull back to another port? Because otherwise we'll be prone to attack from the Venice Navy. Uh, this Swedish Navy is definitely raiding me and, and would be nice to take out. In fact, we're going to do that to close this episode. Uh, may run a little long because of this extra battle. We shall see. Uh, but I'm going to go do it. We're going to close out with a big old naval battle. At least a big old naval battle on our side. There's only three of them. And we are far superior, obviously. Uh, I am going to control the battle. It'll probably be a very quick battle. But uh, I, I've learned my lesson for auto-resolving uh, too many naval battles, especially where we have the chance to lose a vessel, which sometimes auto-resolve will, will have happen, and I don't want to lose a fourth rate. So we'll see you on the high seas. Okay, we got the wind not really in our favor on this one, but uh, all I'm going to do is the, the fourth rates have very limited battle experience, whereas my fifth rates have a lot more battle experience. I'm going to leave the fifth rates in reserve. We're going to set up over on this side to try and take advantage of the wind at least as much as possible. We're going to park our fifth rates back here. In fact, this is how we are going to deploy. To be able to move with the wind, uh, I, I don't know. It depends on how they move. We may have to change everything up, but this is the way we're starting. Let's go find out where they are. There they are. So we'll just slowly advance out this way. And once we enclose a little closer, we'll come back and revisit this battle. Okay, their rear vessel showed that it was moving in that direction. That's where I headed my fleet. The rest, when I got up close, looks like they're moving in this direction. So we're going to take off group formation, and we're going to start heading down there individually. Okay, they're headed upwind, which is probably against the wind, which is probably to their advantage being smaller vessels, but we're going to turn into them anyway. And there's the initial shots at the battle. They're smaller vessels. The sloop and the brig are able to move against the wind better than our larger vessels. Uh, the galley is probably going to end up being left behind. We'll deal with him eventually. Brig taking its first meager shots. Apparently they missed. Let's see if we're able to pound this small vessel at all. A few 
few hits. I think we have all those guns. <laughs> says uh, the little brig is winning slightly. I don't know if I agree with that assessment. time he is listed as losing slightly concerned about hull damage about time withering fire on the brig in the rear so this one going much quicker and much more solidly in our favor as he gets blasted back here and slowly slowly we're turning able to turn into the wind to help us out in this battle and bring more guns, even more of our vessels to bear on this poor little ship. We stop for maneuvering right here and the new vessel will now take over the attack. Boom. And we got him wavering, his hull is drastically damaged. We're gonna get everybody turning back because we're gonna have to head, head towards those galleys soon enough. We have this guy routing, but not for long. We're, we'll bring him down. Losing track of this guy. We need to get turned and faced down. He is routing also. start facing the galley with the remaining ships. And this one is sinking. We have taken out that lesser vessel and we have this guy surrendered. So yeah, all hands on the galley now. With its tattered sails <laughs> and masts falling. The oars they're working so hard, but I have a feeling they're going to be rowing themselves down into the sea in this very unfair engagement. devices of their oars and that is it no more sails as they flounder the only thing helping them is their low profile but not for long with hits like that hits have got to hurt. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. They're routing. They're going to try and row out of this one. <laughs> they better row like the wind because they ain't going to make it. And it has ended in a heroic victory. Uh, unfortunately, sea battles take a long time to maneuver. So for such a simple battle, boy, the maneuvering alone uh, was a challenge. And on this particular one, we're not going to capture any vessels. They're, they're minor little vessels. And we aren't going to bring them aboard. Take that, Sweden. Uh, looks like we can make it to port. Let's go see if we can make it back to our original port. No, not quite. Uh, so we'll at least get into port so we don't have to deal with the Venice Navy at the moment. 
we'll get any repairs done minor repairs at best we gained an ancillary a prize agent plus two to morale in battle and we gained a trait plus one morale in battle it's good to get our admiral improved a bit before we do some any big battle that may happen with the venice navy all right, so I know that's enough. We'll come back next time, spend the last of the money, and then get moving forward uh, on our turn. I know this mission or this episode has lasted long enough. I appreciate y'all sticking around and watching this far into it. For those of you who make it this far, you are my favorite. You're the ones that give me the kind of views I'm looking for, and I want to thank you so much for that. Uh, anyone else? If you're along for the first time, seeing this for the first time, hit that like button, help me out, subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you all next time.